Good morning to the people of Bristol. I'm here today, I'm a Christian preacher, and uh, I'm here to uh, give you some good news today of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'd like to introduce myself first of all, my name is David. Um, I wasn't always a Christian preacher, I was a bad boy for 22 years. Drink, drugs, I ended up with 13 near-death experiences, 3 drink drives and part from 22 pubs near Bath City. I'm now 21 years clean because I won't burn my bedroom through Jesus Christ. I'm not in an organized religion. Organized religion debates. It cannot save you. Church attendance cannot save you. Baptism cannot save you. Today, I'd like to read a passage from the Bible. It's a question that is on a lot of our hearts and minds that we don't actually speak about. 10 out of 10 people will die. It's appointed unto men once to die and after the judgment. Now, there's only two destinations according to the Bible. That's heaven or hell. In the Old Testament, that would have been Abraham's prison, paradise, or Hades, Gehenna. And I'd like to read today from Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 31. It's about a rich man and a beggar called Lazarus. The two men, the beggar sat outside the rich man's house begging. And the rich man was, uh, had everything, he had everything and the two of them died. The rich man went to hell, the poor man went to heaven. Went to um, Abraham's bosom, free the cross. So today I'd like to read from uh, Luke. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and discerned to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom which is paradise in the Old Testament. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom and the rich man also died and was buried. Went straight into hell, into eternal torment. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and see of Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receives, receiveth thy good things, and Lazarus here likewise evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from thence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. In other words, you can't pass from heaven to hell. Those in heaven can't go to hell, and those in hell can't go to heaven. There's a great gulf and a great divide, a great separation. And those in hell are separated from God permanently. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him, Lazarus, to my father's house. For I have five brethren, send them back to the earth, I've got five family on the earth, that they may testify unto them, so that they may repent, at least they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. In other words, they have the word of God. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. And as I read through this, and I go over it again, you know, the rich man was fed sumptuously. The beggar had nothing. Yet the beggar was in Abraham's bosom in paradise, in heaven. 
the rich man was in hell. And sometimes people look at the two types, there's different people in the world. And you know, there isn't many classes, only rich and poor. And the rich man, because he was rich with materialism and had much items and had plenty of money, he thought that he was blessed by God, yet he was the one that ended up in hell. And these are literal accounts in the Bible. Jesus' words, they are actually Jesus' words. So Jesus spoke of heaven and hell, of two eternal destinations. Paradise, heaven, for those who are saved, those who are born again, and hell, for those who are unsaved, and eternal torment, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, eternal pain and suffering. So I'm here today, there's no purgatory, no reincarnation, no second chances. Everyone who dies, past, present and future, will either end up in one of these places, heaven or hell. Many are complacent in their condition, that all is well with their soul. I'm a good person, yeah I'm a very good person, I do lots of good works. Good works can't save anyone, for by grace are you saved through faith and not, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, at least any man should boast. In fact, the dictionary says that a good, uh, a good person, the word good in the, in the dictionary, 40 definitions of the word good. Number one is to be morally excellent. Now, are you morally excellent? Let's see if you are morally excellent according to the standard of God. The standard he's going to use, basically, is the Ten Commandments. Now, you've heard of the Ten Commandments. Let's go three, three, four, five to see how well you'll do on that day. And by the way, I'm not judging you. I broke all ten. I was a wretched sinner for 22 years in bondage to alcohol, which led me to soft drugs, which led me to 13, approximately 13 near-death experiences. I'm now 21 years clean because of one prayer in my bedroom through Jesus Christ. So let's look at the ninth commandment. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not lie. Be true to yourself and answer this to your, uh, examine yourself in the light of God's word, in the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thou shalt not lie. Have you ever told a lie in your life? If you told a lie, what does that make you? A liar. Have you ever stolen anything in your life irrelevant of the value and not give it back? What does that make you? A thief. Have you ever took God's name in vain? OMG in the name of Jesus Christ. Because I look around now in the name of Jesus Christ, the one name above all names, that at the name of Jesus Christ every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The name of Jesus is blasphemed throughout this world. Hollywood movies, every program on TV, Taking it in vain means they don't even know they're doing it at times. But if I was to take your mother or dad's name, your son or daughter's name, your brother or sister's name, or someone you loved and was dear to you, and I used their name as a four-letter filth word to express disgust, you'd be offended. How much more offended is God when we use his son's name, Jesus, is blasphemy. Jesus said, the seventh commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. Now, there's two ways of committing adultery. I don't know if you knew that or not. But he said, you've heard it said of them of all time, they should not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looks upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. So it's not just with a physical adultery, it's also with the thoughts. He's going to judge our thoughts, our words, and our actions. If you hate someone, that's murder of the heart. Because God sees our thought life, we thought all manner of evil against them, even our own families at times. And if we could have hurt them and got away with it, we probably would have, with anger and rage. So let's stop there, that's five of the Ten Commandments, I won't go through the other five. But according to the book of James, if you break one commandment, you're guilty of all ten anyway. No one can keep the commandments. But if you've answered yes to any of these commandments, you've done any of these things, and all five, You'd be a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer, and a murderer at heart. Now tell me, if you went before God in judgment day, which you will, it's appointed unto me once to die, but after the judgment. And God were to judge you by the Ten Commandments. 
Would you be innocent or guilty? Listen to your conscience, you know you'd be guilty, and therefore end up in God's eternal prison, a place called hell. Hitler, Stalin, key defense, rapists, murderers, if they do that to our families, we want them to go there, we want justice. But God's not going to stop there, he's going to go with the lying, the stealing, the small sins as well as the large sins. Sin is sin in God's eyes. You must be born again. Jesus said you must be born again in John chapter 3, verse 3. He said, Verily, verily, old English King James, he said, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What does it mean to be born again? To be born again, you can't get back into your mother's womb and come back out. You need to be born of a new heart, of a new spirit, of the Holy Spirit to learn and help us to do what's righteous. 21 years ago, I was born again in my bedroom with tears coming down my face. I'm not in an organized religion because religion can't save you. Church attendance can't save you. Baptism can't save you. There's no purgatory. There's no reincarnation. There's no middle ground. Two destinations, heaven or hell. That's the bottom line. To be born again means to have a new heart. To do what's righteous. Repentance. Jesus said, I tell you now, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. The gospel. To turn from our wicked ways. To put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. However, God is rich in mercy. And in his great kindness, he provided a savior. Jesus took the punishment for our sins. He died on the cross so that we could be forgiven. He rose from the grave and defeated death. But God commended his love towards us that in yet while we were sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us. He shed his holy and precious blood. Much more than being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Believe, trust, and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will pass from eternal death to eternal life. The Bible says, Verily, verily, urgently, urgently, I say unto you, Whosoever heareth my word and believe upon him that sent me of everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but has passed from death unto life. When are you going to get right with your Creator? When are you going to die? None of us know the minute or the hour of the day. In fact, 150,000 people die every day. 54 million people a year. That's before this, this COVID. Now it's about 56. So what I'm saying today is to get right with your Creator. To repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. Not in a religion, but in the Savior Himself, Jesus Christ. Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God. And the moment you do, God promises, because you cannot lie, that your, your place in heaven is prepared. You'll be born again. God will give you a new heart with a new spirit called the Holy Spirit. And he'll learn you to do what's righteous. To turn from our unrighteousness to righteousness. When believers die today, they go immediately to heaven straight into the arms of the Lord, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. But when unbelievers die, they go directly into torment, eternal torment, where the worm shall not die. Pain and suffering, agony. This is, people say to me, well, hell's on earth, this is hell we're living through. This is not hell, this is not burning in a fiery lake. But the fearful and unbelieving, the abominable and murderers, and whoremongers and sorcerers and adulterers, and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burn up a fire and brimstone which is the second death. So I urge the people of Bristol today to get right with your Creator, to repent and put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. And God will change us from the inside out. And thank you very much for listening to me today. May God bless you all.